Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Welcome back to Nerdy for 30. This is our first official episode of our third season. We are so stoked to be back. We are so stoked to have you back with us. Oh my God, Tim, it feels great, doesn't it? It does feel great to be back. You know, we took some time off to reflect, to, uh, to you know, get our, you know, spend time with our families who missed us very much after all mm-hmm. the time we'd spent away from them podcasting. Uh, we saw some movies. We're going to be talking about them coming up this uh, this new year, new season, new us, Kevin, but still the same old lovable scamps that you guys uh, tune in for every week. So uh, this will be great. Um, got some more listener mail, some more listener notes. I heard what all of you guys have been saying about me being jealous of that son of a bitch, Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Fuck him. What is there to be jealous of? You know, all the money he has, uh... all the good looks he's got. That beautiful wife of his, the success, the power, the respect. I can get that from tons of places, not just him. All oh right. Some people have more God. to offer than that. Some people have all of the things to be jealous of and then more to go off of. And then some people are just like kind of like pathetic shells, like nepotism babies. Like Ryan Gosling's got to have rich parents because there's no other explanation for his success and people caring about him. I just wanted to get this year uh, off to the right, right, uh, right foot off on the right foot. Off on the right. Ryan Gosling would know the right thing to say right now, but fuck him. And uh, thank you all for listening to the podcast and tuning in for another wonderful year of Nerdy for 30. Well, luckily, we don't have enough time for your Ryan Gosling takes today because we have an entire (laughs) year worth of movies that we got to get to. That's right. You loved it last year. So we're doing it again. It's time for scorecasting. Got a lot of build up. I'm going to tell you what I've told you a thousand times, Kevin. Not long enough. (laughs) Uh, I will never trim that song. Last year, we made predictions for all the movies that we wanted to or that we could fit in one episode that were coming out in 2022. We made predictions for what the critic score was going to be. We made predictions for what the audience score was going to be. I tallied up on Rotten Tomatoes. That's right. I tallied up all the results, and I could not be more excited to tell you, I guess, who won. The thing is that we didn't say last year that we were making it a competition. (laughs) It is. Um, It Definitely. It felt like a competition to me. And the results are in. Best at predicting critics, yours truly. Wow. I was only, on average, across the entire year, six percentage points off. From the actual critic scores for these movies. Best at predicting audiences, surprising no one, you, Tim. Wow, that's pretty impressive. For all of 2022, you guessed about four percentage points lower than audiences actually thought. So you underestimated their enjoyment a little bit, but you were still pretty much dead on. Best at predicting the total, that's the combination, the average between the critic score and the audience score. I was dead fucking on, Tim. I was these, dead on. these numbers don't make any sense. This is this is crazy. So so Kevin Critic is a six, but your audience is a minus six, and right. that equals seven. This is malarkey. It should be twelve. No, the the audience is minus six. So on average, over the course of the year, I underestimated the audience's enjoyment of these movies by about six Rotten Tomatoes percentage points. Yeah, but you were off by six. It shouldn't be you know a minus thing. It should be the degrees off we were. You know. Oh, like percentage, like percent change. Like if if the audience was 89 and I Uh guessed 88 and you guessed, you know, 90, then we're all both off by one. Yeah, that's what this does. 
Well, I, I, but I lost, so I don't think this is entirely <laughs> accurate. So going into the new year, we're going to have a better system. We're going to have exact numbers. And I, I think I pretty diligently gave you specific numbers on last year's pod. So I, I don't know what happened, but maybe these were fudged somehow. But uh, this this all this whole thing is sketchy to me. But I think I think in general, uh, you know, it says something we both knew, which is we're incredibly good at this. Right. Never doubted that. Look, I, I knew going into Never the first forecasting episode that the things that we spit out were going to be reliable on average over the course of the entire year and the other arbitrary movies that we picked to give percentage guesses for. So, Tim, with that yeah. said, are you ready to do this for 2023? Yes, I am. Well, I am, too. Do you mean to keep sharing your screen? You yeah, are. I mean, you are intentionally the, sharing your screen. Yeah, this is intentional. OK, so if you're on you watching us on YouTube which has become very popular now with the kids. You can totally see our list and what we're going to be going through and hopping in and out. And you can see our incredible spreadsheet Kevin made that is probably grossly inaccurate, but uh, still, you know, nice, comforting knowledge to have. You know, you can never have too much data. That's what I always say. I've never felt more vulnerable <laughs> than having <laughs> than someone I question a spreadsheet that I made that is recorded and put on YouTube. You did this to yourself. You wanted this and uh, you made a spreadsheet that declared you the winner and you expect everyone to just go with it. Crazy, crazy talk. You're going to have Check critics. Numbers. Ball don't lie, Tim. Yeah. So this is why lie. I don't like science. People are always asking questions, challenging things. You know, it's easier if we all just go along, but I refuse to I refuse to. I feel like I'm all over the place today. Honestly, I'll, I'll lock in for this. I promise. All right, let's lock in right now. Let's both of us lock in. <laughs> I have on this spreadsheet 35 movies that are coming out in the year 2023. Uh, for some of these movies, we have a trailer. For some of these movies, we just have a poster. For some of these movies, we don't have either of those things. There's a few on here where it's just rumored that this movie's going to come out this year. It's still on the books for the production companies, but nobody has released anything else about the movie. So... Uh, let's go ahead and take turns through these and just make sure that for each one, we give a guess for the audience score and the critic score. Tim, you want to kick us off? OK, we've got this long list of things coming up this year. What are we excited about? What are we not excited about? What do we think the scores are going to be? Kevin, I saw a trailer. We, we went to go see some movies this week. Saw spoiler alert, Megan, you know, over the weekend, there was a trailer that caught all of our eyes. Cocaine bear. I am so excited about Cocaine Bear. I think it's going to be an uproarious, ruckus good time. I think critics are going to hate it. I think audiences are going to love it. And we're looking at like, uh, you know, like a 52 critics and like, uh, gosh, probably even just like a 78 audience. <laughs> but I think but I think the people who go are going to know exactly what they're going for. And I think it's going to be fun. I think it'll be like the audience for Megan. They were locked in. They knew exactly what was happening. And if you're going to see Cocaine Bear, you are looking for a good, dumb, stupid time. And I think we're going to get it, Kevin. Wow. That's insane. I don't think this is going to be a good movie. I think most of the hype in this movie is in the title. It's in the poster. It's in the premise. From what I've seen in the trailer, I don't think that they are making the best use of that premise um the only person in this ray liotta's in this movie isn't he is he the guy they show in the <laughs> trailer <he> really? <laughs> i think he is well if that's, one it, guy, that, that's true I, i'm I all mean, in on ray liotta there's one actor in it i'm pretty sure it's ray liotta that is in the trailer who is like in a different movie whatever movie he's in is the one that cocaine bear should be everybody else is in like an episode of a sitcom i think uh, the one lesson that I learned last year was that the critics are willing to go way lower on movies than I thought. So in this one, I'm going to say critics 23, audiences 66. Wow. Okay. What did I say? Now I want to change my critic score. You're you right. To change it. They're going to go way low. Oh, I think it's rock bottom. Like you said, they're going to be in the what it, I'm going to go lower than you, whatever for the critics. I think it's like going to be that, that it's going to be that terrible. And I, even the audience is going to be like, what did I say? 78 or something. Yeah. I don't remember. We can we can play it back and figure out exactly what I said. I'm going to go with. Uh, gosh, what's the lowest Rotten Tomato score a critic could give? I'm going to say like 25, 25 critics and audience. 
yeah, it's still going to be like 77 or whatever I said before. OK, but you're right. Critics are going to hate this. I think this is going to be a bad movie. Don't get me wrong. This is going to be a bad movie. I'm optimistic that it will hit the notes that. It will it will meet the low expectations for what we want for this movie. If we just have a bear going crazy and doing dumb shit the whole time, like people will be into it. If the bear does a lot of drugs, wrecks a lot of people, murders a bunch of people. Also, is this movie going to be an R? It has to be. It has if it to isn't be. I feel like if it isn't an R, then the audience score is going to drop. But if this is an R rated cocaine bear movie and we see some grisly murders from a bear, I'm all in on it. I'm 100 percent in on it being a 77 <laughs> audience score. Rotten tomatoes. I'll be there. I'm going to be there. We will both be there. Nerdy for 30. will be recovering this. I can't wait. Oh, my God. First off, I just want to thank all of the audience members sitting in their car shouting about the grisly murders and bear connection you just made. <laughs> like like 20 people in the Midwest just screamed grisly bear. Um, <laughs> I also want to call out the fact that you said if this bear does a bunch of drugs in this movie. <laughs> it's cocaine bear. Oh, boy. But what if he doesn't do enough? That's my concern. There's a way that they could do this movie that is boring and dumb and PG-13 and then we'll be out completely. But if this bear does a bunch of cocaine and kills people, I don't see it. I mean, the formula is it writes itself. This can't be a bad movie if that's what happens. I'm with you in that. Like if the bear does a bunch of cocaine at the beginning of the movie and then powers through the rest of it, that sucks. But if they somehow make it like crank where the bear keeps finding stashes of cocaine, I think that's how you make that work. Oh, my God. The fact that the guys from Crank aren't doing this movie is a huge missed opportunity. <laughs> Absolutely huge. We can look it up. God. They're on rollerblades, like skating through the rain, through the forest, like <laughs> tracking a real bear. Like, God, those guys are awesome. All right. I want to move on to another one that I think is a, a situation of like, those guys are awesome. And I'm really excited to see what happens with it. Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among yeah. Thieves. So this is one that I heard was coming out a while back, sounded terrible. First trailer dropped, it looked great. Then I saw who was behind it. It's being directed by uh, John Francis Daly and his writing directing partner. Um, I think his name is Jonathan Goldstein, but they're the same people. They co-wrote Spider-Man Homecoming. What? Um, (laughs) They've been behind a few like really, really fun movies and- Huh. I generally think they're just like really terrific. I think they have a really oh, they did Game Night. Did you ever see Game Night? Yeah, I like Game Night. Game yeah. Night was good. Game Night's great. Huh. Um, yeah, I think this. Uh, I think this one's going to be really good. I think D and D Honor Among Thieves is going to be like. I think this could hit like, you know, like an eighty nine audience and like a. 88 critics. Wow. Okay. I, uh, I think I was thinking in the same ballpark with like, uh, I don't, I wonder if critics, I think this is going to be a top. I think this could potentially be a top tier B movie. I mean, that's essentially what we're talking about, right? Outside of like, you know, Spider-Man, which I mean, most of these Marvel movies are really, they're just, they're like popcorn movies. They're like, they're B movies at the heart of them. So I think this could be like a top tier B movie. I, uh, that is an impressive resume, but I also just think there's a chance that this, I don't know. I'm going to go critics like 81 and, uh, audience 88. I think that's realistic. Yeah. I'm glad we're aligned on this one, though, at the very least. Yeah, I do. Uh, I'm excited for it. I think it'll be fun. I think it's just the kind of movie I like. Uh, speaking of just the kind of movie I like. Uh, well, oh, my God, there's actually so many things on this list that I'm really excited about. No, we'll never get through it all. We'll never get through it all. John Wick, Chapter four. How Where excited are you for John Wick? The fourth one, because I these are. I think pretty arbitrarily like some of the best action movies that have come out in the United States in the past. I don't know how they're, they're the best. They're so goddamn good. The action is amazing. The plot. Sure. 
doesn't make any sense anymore. The whole the whole all these movies together have taken place in like four days. And John Wick is somehow still standing after I'm pretty sure falling off a building in like the second one. And he's like gets up and like runs away. It's in New York. That's fun. I love this whole like underground assassin society. And I just I know we're going to get some more awesome kills in this. He fought with a horse in the last one. He went to a <laughs> knife museum. Like what's next? What weapon haven't we seen? What animal is he going to fight with? Is he going to like have a snake whip or something? Halle Berry was in the last one. What kind of like, you know, celebrity that. No, no, no shade to Halle Berry, but what forgotten celebrity is going to be dusted off and thrown on screen to kick ass (laughs) next to John Wick Keanu? I I have very high hopes for this movie. Personally, I am like, I can't wait for this movie. I think it's going to be kick ass and great. Is it the last one? I don't even know. It could be. Could be. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. At least the fight scenes alone are going to make this worth seeing. Kevin, how hyped are you for John Wick? I have still never seen a John Wick movie. You haven't seen a John Wick no, movie? No, we went to see, I think we tried to, it was oh. two that we tried to go see in the theaters and fell asleep, right? We what? Were, yeah, it was after we got back from Harvard. It was like, we went, you, me, and Breen went. We saw it at the the one theater in Williamsburg and we smoked beforehand and we all just fell asleep. Well, you didn't <laughs> There's fall asleep. There's no way. I woke up at the credits. I fell asleep <laughs> when he was checking in with some of the hotel. I'd also never seen John Wick 1. And then I remember distinctly, I woke up as the like sting hit for the credits and I like came back to consciousness and I looked over at you and you went, how good was that? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that sounds right. I'm probably on my own uh, as far as this podcast concerned for John Wick 4, but (laughs) goddamn, it's going to be great. These normally do like really good though. Like don't John Wick movies normally get like 80s, 90s on Rotten Tomatoes? I have no idea. This doesn't play to any of my strengths with these (laughs) numbers. I don't know. I can't. I have no idea what this will do. I'm I'm telling you, my heart says this is going to be 100 percent. My my brain tells me it's going to be like uh, like a critics like, you know, oh, gosh, I bet I want to say it's in the everything's in the 80s for me. The critics are going to say, no, this is a 77 from the critics and the audience is going to be like. 91. Okay. I think it's there. Yeah, I'll go. Huh? With you on it's that. not going to be perfect, but I think I think this is going to be like people like it. Just for the sake of it being the fourth movie, I'm going to say the critics are going to go a little bit lower. I think they're going to say like something like, though full of fast paced entertainment that's sure to give you popcorn thrills. John Wick four is starting to show the seams of the franchise and they're going to give it like a 67. And then the audience, yeah, is going to give it like a 91, 92. Yeah, I think you're right about how the other critics are always, you know, I, I think why I'm generally going into this with the critics of bad taste and <laughs> so and aren't to be respected. So I should be going lower in all these critic scores. That's what I've learned from our score casting. I mean, yeah, but, what was uh, your average? Yeah. You were uh, you were on average 17 points higher than what the critics predicted last year. <laughs> I just got to go. I got to be more pessimistic. Like I got to put my mind in the in the, like the 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 seat of an old fart. Who mm-hmm. likes thinks Gone with the Wind is like the most cool thing that's ever happened, and like thought Heat was like too edgy, and uh, has like a Godfather poster that the entire <laughs> cast signed, and mm-hmm. it's behind glass, and they have a thick they have a thick chair in front of, and they have a bunch of books. They still have like so many books, and they're all about movies. Like they they buy like it's like a Scholastic book fair, but for old men, where it's just like <laughs> oh they like you know the way the way I bought Men in Black. Like in paperback, <laughs> these guys have like you know, <laughs> these guys have the Godfather. <laughs> oh my God, what's that like John Waters quote where it's like, if you go home with someone and they don't have books, don't fuck them. I love the idea that someone comes home and they check your bookcase and they're like, oh good, he has books, and then they realize that it's just Men in Black and paperback. <laughs> it's like all the animorphs, Men in Black paperback. <laughs> Oh, oh my some things God. haven't been colored yet. Yeah, I mean, this the, the audience will love this and the critics will will be, you know, I think they have to acknowledge they'll have to acknowledge the fight scenes, but the plot will be terrible in this. So, yeah, you're probably right with that 60s. Uh, I want to keep this pessimism streak going. I want to drop. I told you I had bombshells for you this episode. This one you're going to love. It turns out, Tim, that there is a reboot of The Exorcist coming this year. They're changing it from a single movie into a trilogy. 
the first installment drops this Halloween season. It is being directed by the same guy that did the Halloween Ends trilogy. <laughs> yeah, this sucks. This is this sucks. This is stupid. There's like not even enough story for one Exorcist movie, and they're just going to stretch it into a trilogy. Like, what happens? Is the demon going to come back? Is is a, is a, some kid going to become obsessed with the demon and then kick its ass and then possess a girl on his own? Like, what? What? The, these guys. Okay, here's what's going to happen. The first one is going to be great. It's going to be great. And everyone's going to be like, we needed this movie. It's going to be awesome. The second and third ones are going to make you hate the exorcist and question, you know, why movie theaters exist, you know, and hopefully they're bad enough that these people never work again, or at least whoever's selling them trilogies is insane. Like be like, just be like one good movie. Just do one, do one movie. And then walk away and find another thing to do one movie for because your second and third movies make people want Michael Myers to kill them. So, you know, this will be fine. This is going to do Halloween one numbers, I bet. No, you know what? This is a remake nobody wants. So. Gosh, critics. Are critics going to like this? What do you think? What do you think is going to happen with this? Well, we'll, audiences, I think you're going to be like, I, you know what? I think this does surprisingly well. I think it's going to be like in the eighties for audiences and critics. I don't know. Maybe they're in the eighties too. I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is, this is the exorcist, right? This is a beloved film. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think this gets a little bit different traction than when people were trying to remake or like add on to the Halloween franchise because they weren't, it was kind of a soft reboot, but they weren't fully rebooting Halloween. They were still paying homage to what had come beforehand. So they didn't like draw the ire of people. When you're making a new Exorcist movie, I mean, that's like, that's like making a new Godfather movie. So that stuffy old man in a chair you talked about is going to be real mad. I'm thinking this is going to get like, I think this is going to get like critics 48 audience mm. 60. Yeah. Now that you mention it, I think this movie will be good, but the Halloween franchise does have a thing with like, we know we're going to see a bunch of cool murders. We know this, it's a concept that like is evergreen, right? It's mm. just a scary guy in a mask going around killing people. And the exorcist is like this weird, churchy thing that's like i don't know man i don't care the possessions and shit doesn't do anything for me in general um yeah critics i'm gonna say critics yeah i think you were kind of close with that with like i think critics 45 and audience ugh, audience like 58 okay i think that's it's smart man the numbers for halloween ends were bad like real bad lower than that so yeah I think it's going to it's going to definitely do worse than the Halloween begins or whatever the first one was Halloween. Yeah. So, ugh, OK, so that last one to really like dive into. All right. Mm -hmm. ugh, what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Uh, let's go fast, Dex. I, I was helping. I don't want to be like pessimistic about this. I don't know what to do. I always like the Fast and Furious movies. I think they're good. I think it peaked, you know, with five or six. I think that's pretty undeniable. The last one, John Cena was in it. I kind of thought it was fun. They're doing the same stuff. They go to space. It's nuts. And it's fun. Do I like having the young versions of them in it? No, I think they're terrible. I think it's a I think it was like a, a backdoor pilot for like a shitty movie about Dominic Toretto as a child, which I don't want to. I don't think anybody wanted to see nobody. Anytime you're like, hey, people like this thing. Let's make them a kid. Like, fuck off, fuck off. You might as well make Halloween ends again, because it's another thing that people have not ever wanted. Nobody's wanted it. Nobody likes it. Nobody asks for it. So. I think they ditched the kids X. I think the stakes are very high, but um, who is it? Justin Lin is the director and he did like the last few and he dropped out, I think. Yeah. Uh, because of Unless this, I you've think been there's on set behavior, right? <sighs> I don't know if it was Vin Diesel or or what. The, I mean, the behavior around this is interesting because because the rock won't work with them anymore. Um, it sounds like Vin Diesel is very close 
to the remaining cast. But as far as new people getting in, it doesn't seem to happen. I don't know what his status with Jason Statham is. Ugh, I don't ha- I don't have a good feeling about it. I want it to be good. I think this could be like, is this the last one or the second to last one? I was just going to ask you the uh, same thing. Feels like it should be the finale, maybe. It feels like it should be the finale. It could be the finale. I want it to be good. I think it'll be cool. Oh, God. I'm going to go. The audience is going to be like, gosh, I think an audience like 92. I think people are going to really like it. And no, I'm crazy. No, audience 87. Audience 87 and uh, uh, critics. Man, critics are going to be like, you know, 59 with this. That feels I don't good. think critics are going to like this at all. Critics are going to hate it. I don't think this is going to be universally beloved. I think the Fast and Furious franchise has lost some credibility. But every time you see a Fast and Furious movie, it's it's a good time. People like it. It's I don't know. It's uh, yeah, it's a really popular franchise. If it's the last one, if it's pitched as the last ride, I think people show up for it and like it. Interesting. I th- I'm the stuff with Ven really throws me. And the fact that Justin Lin quit really throws me. I'm thinking I definitely feel like, yeah, critics in the 50s, like 50. I'll go like 53 and then I'll say audience. I'm going to throw like an 85. I think this one's going to take a hit. I think you're definitely going to have people that are like a little gracious with it because it's like, well, it's the last one. But I think people are going to kind of concede like, yeah, it's not as good. though. Yeah, I think so. I think unfortunately it's trending towards not as good. But I'm hopeful. I just I think I want it to be good. I want it to be amazing. I do too, man. Okay, are we going rapid fire through the rest Let's of go these? Rapid fire. I'll assign one to you, then you assign one to me, and vice versa. While we round out the rest of this podcast. Uh let's see here. We already did we did the flash, we did predictions for the flash and Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse last year. Does anything so change for you about either one of those? Um, I don't think so. I think Flash is gonna suck. Spider-Man is going to be awesome. I think we're pretty much uh, lockstep with that, right? Yeah, um, with the exception that apparently like screenings, they've done test screenings of The Flash. And the quote that I read was that the test screenings had like Spider-Man No Way Home reactions. I don't know if that necessarily indicates like actual quality, though. I still think it's probably not going to be the best. Mm-hmm. What could they possibly do that would get you to react the way you would for all the Spider-Man on there? There's nothing like Michael Keaton could be in it. He was going to be in Batwoman. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm freaking out for Michael Keaton's Batman. Uh, uh, Christian Bale showing up might be cool. Um, what other characters does DC have that you would be excited to see in this? Like none. There are, there's nothing that I would be excited for. If they hadn't already beat the joke dead in the Deadpool franchise, I would say that it'd be really funny to see Ryan Reynolds as Green Lantern again. And that feels like something that he would have been up for. I don't know. I don't think that would have been amazing. Yeah. I don't think DC has anybody else that would be great to see. Uh, Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck that movie. It's I mean, I'm going to see it. I don't think it's going to be great. I can't wait to see it. I think it's going to suck. I think they're doing everything they can to market this as something awesome. This is pre James Gunn, right? Like he's Mm -hmm. getting his hands on it a little bit now, but this is this is supposed to be the reboot for DC. It almost certainly won't be because they're going to reboot it again after this. Uh, This guy, this uh, this person, Ezra Miller, right, is like kind of a problem uh, and seems, you know, to be I don't know maybe a predator like i don't know just seems to have all kinds of problems however that much it's crazy they're even putting this movie out in a lot of ways i don't know i'm not uh not here for it um kevin what do you think of the super mario bros movie oh boy you know the first trailer i was like damn i think this is going to actually be a really good movie i have less of a problem with chris pratt's voice as mario And I think a lot of people do. But in terms of like the actual movie itself by the studio, it seems like that could be a pretty fun ride. Uh, I'm going to guess for that one. I'm going to guess like uh, 84 critics. Mm, It seems like people are really bothered by the voice. I think the voice is going to dock this a few percentage points. I was going to say 92. I'm going to say 90 audience, 82 critics. What do you think? 
Oh, I think this is like a 93 audience. Like, I think people like this. Like, voices are something people complain about in advance. But mm-hmm. then the movie's going and you forget. And I think kids are going to love this. I think everyone. I think this can be like this is the family movie of the year. Uh, the animation looked so good. The trailer is like so amazing. Like if it like if if the trailer is just like a, a portion of what's going on, we're in good hands. I'm all for it. I think. Yeah, I think critics are going to be 80, 88, 88 and audience will be 93. I think it's going to I think it's the kind of thing they're going to be like, oh, this is a cute movie, you know, could be good. But I'm again, I'm always high on the critics. Uh, hit me with one. Uh, yeah, let's give you what do you think about Creed three? Dude, I love Creed. Creed's awesome. It's it's like it's maybe the perfect reboot uh, for something we've ever had. Right. Like Rocky. Amazing. Historic. Old. Those movies are old. Creed kicks ass. Modern. Awesome. Michael B. Jordan is a god amongst men. I'm here for Creed. What's his face is going to be the the villain in this. Yeah. Man. Kang the Conqueror who is shredded as hell and like really having a moment. I think we're going to get like uh, uh, 81. Oh, man, I'm going way too high again with this critic stuff. But I think it's going to be like an 81 critics and like audience like, yeah, 89, 89 audience. I think this is going to be popular. These stories do well. Um, yeah, I think it'll be awesome. What do you think about Creed? I think the second one sucked, but the first one's one of my favorite movies. And the first one did like really good numbers, I think. So I'll go with you, 89 audience. I think the critics are going to be like, uh, I think the critics are going to be like 87. I think this is super high 80s on both. Yeah, really? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Hit me with one. All right. Um, what do you think of the Hunger Games? They're doing like a prequel, right? The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Are you a Hunger Games guy, Kevin? No, Uh, I read the first book to see the first movie and, uh, you know, I thought the book was kind of cool. They removed a few of the things that I thought were like really hardcore about the book, like the fact that people were getting mutated into like half monster things. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to see that live action. And they just took it out. I felt so robbed by that. Um, I think I saw I think I saw the second and third movies, too. I genuinely can't remember um i think it's bad we can make that one fast i think uh 52 critics uh 61 audience what do you think i think these movies are fascinating because i can't bring myself to watch the third one it's in two parts like harry potter the first one cool good movie the book was fun it's not as good as the book two i'm like cool i can i can dig deep and get through this now the third book i remember hating the third book i haven't i can't get i can't watch the third movie i've tried multiple times i peter out on it why would anybody want a prequel prequels suck i'm going uh like a 42 critics and like uh no you know what like a 32 critics and like uh 48 audience like nobody wants this this sucks people suck if they enjoy this so it's trash all right, let's do, uh, we probably have time for like one more, but we have one, two, three Marvel movies on the list. Where's the third one? We do. Okay. Numbers only. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. <sighs> Numbers only. Numbers okay. Only. Critic, critics, uh, 77 audience, um, audience like 95. Wow. Uh, I'm yeah. thinking audience. 90 critics 80 numbers only guardians okay. of the galaxy volume three oof i think this is going to be like critics like 89 audience 90s 95 i guess 95 again i think this is going to be really good i think it's gonna be the best marvel movie you know in the past couple years totally agree james gunn finale i think uh audience 96 critic 92 numbers nice. only Ending this episode, the Marvels. Ugh, we uh, both like Tenoya Paris from uh, WandaVision. We both like Kamala Khan. Yeah. They're both in and this Brie movie. Fine. She's I fine. I think it will be. I think this is going to be like critics is going to be like, you know, 85 and audience will be 84. Okay. I feel that. 
Uh, I'm thinking like 85 and 84. I think there's a chance the critics like this more than the audience. That's what I think. I think that's probably right. I think, yeah, like critics like. Yeah, I think like critics like uh, 87, audience like 82. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I think there's a chance this one's just lower because I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Captain Marvel, one of the worst uh, Marvel movies they've done. And uh, they haven't really shown us faith that they can uh, they can make her character enjoyable. Yeah. So, so it's it entirely is. on the new characters to carry that. <laughs> I, mean, I think we're going to love them. I think so, too. It's entirely yeah. on the rest of you to take it from here. Did we fuck up? Did we get these scores wrong? Let us know right into the show. Nerdy430 at gmail.com or find us on social media. Uh, give us a follow. Jump in the comments. Just talk as much shit on us as you want. You got a whole year for it. Keep us yeah. accountable. We can't wait. And check us out on YouTube if you want to see Kevin's uh, Excel sheet and start your critiques early. Yeah, but, you know, good luck critiquing that one because that shit is perfect. Uh, thank you very much for listening, everybody. Stay nerdy. Bye. Stay nerdy. Bye. Bye. <laughs>